The islands of Orkney, a mysterious place with an equally mysterious ancient past. We have previously covered the astonishing mound that can be found upon mainland Orkney, known as Maze Howe. This astonishing earthwork of gigantic proportions, an ancient site made from enormous ancient megalithic blocks, which although mostly hidden under many hundreds of tons of earth, protecting the site and unquestionably aiding in its preservation into modern times, the entrance stones are exposed, visible for all the world to see. Although modern academia, along with the thousands of people who visit the site each year, seemingly overlook this astonishing fact of the structure, or are simply unaware of the mammoth undertaking, the transportation and original placement of these stones would have been. Not only is the movement of these stones, according to the age of the site and indeed current academic study, unexplainable, their perfect alignment with the winter solstice is yet another factor which not only makes the site a baffling location for modern man to explain, but we believe makes it a strong piece of evidence to suggest the existence of a past, highly knowledgeable, highly advanced civilization that once flourished here on our planet. And Mays Howe is not the only astonishing, baffling, and as yet unexplained ruin which can be found within Orkney. Dwarfy Stain is yet another of these mysterious ruins that due to the astonishing size of its megalithic stone structure has survived the eons. Yet unfortunately, regardless of its clear historical importance, due to its inexplicable nature is ignored by an academia who simply cannot explain its origins. It is a megalithic chambered stone that has predictably been attributed to having once been a tomb. This identification of a tomb is commonplace within academic circles, an occurrence that can be found describing countless unexplained sites all over the world. We postulate, however, the fact that many ancient ruins of more recent historical figures have indeed been found in many of these attributed ancient structures. This is merely a result of their astonishing nature and as such, the past controlling parties of the lands they are found within selected these miraculous sites as their places of burial, rather than them actually being those responsible for the building of the structures. Carved out of a single titanic block of Devonian Old Red Sandstone and located on a steep-sided glaciated valley, the carving of this stone, along with the mammoth size of its closing stone, we feel is clearly indicative of a lost civilization. Any explanation as to how our more modern ancestors could have used such a stone, weighing many tons in weight, to seal such a chamber remains elusive. It is unique to Northern Europe. R. Castleden, a popular academic author of historical study, refers to the dwarfy stain as representing, quote, the imported idea of the rock-cut tomb that was tried once and found to be unsatisfactory." End quote. He presumes this dissatisfaction of a more modern constructor be due to the hardness of the old red sandstone. We, however, disagree with this hypothesis for several, we feel, obvious reasons. Firstly, there is no direct evidence linking the site to any builders of Mediterranean rock-cut tombs. Secondly, the size of the megalithic block involved in the construction, and indeed the hardness of the stone that was selected to create the structure, is indicative of a lost civilization's workmanship. This is due to the fact that the closing stone would not have been a viable size for any of our well-studied ancient ancestors to have used, worked, or moved. Why would they choose to make a closing stone of such gigantic proportions? And thirdly, why would they have gone to such effort in carving the build from one a single stone of notorious toughness with the tools they had at their disposal? All the other, we feel, more recently created tombs found in the area are not only vastly different from dwarfy stain, but were created with blocks of a far smaller size. As such, 
would have been far easier to work with, and thus are far more logically explained as our primitive ancestors were. The name of the structure is derived from a local legend, stating a dwarf named Trollid once lived there, although other legends claim it to have once been the work of giants. We will let you come to your own conclusions as to which legend would fit most accurately. Undoubtedly, an astonishing ancient ruin, one that due to its incredible size, has survived the eons to the modern day, allowing inquisitive individuals to ponder over its origins and indeed original constructors. It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Have you ever heard of a man known as Og? References to Og appear in the Phoenician inscriptions from Byblos, within the much older Canaanite Ugaritic texts, within Midian on the northwest Arab Peninsula, in Deuteronomy, in the Book of Numbers, and in Joshua, mentioned in many religious and non-religious texts, King of Basham, which is now the Golan Heights. Who was this Og? Well, it turns out, Og was a giant. A rather special giant. He was, in fact, the last of his kind. The Book of Numbers states that he died during the Battle of Edrei. Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 11 declares that his bedstead, translated in some texts as sarcophagus, was made of iron and was 9 cubits in length and 4 cubits in width, about 13 and a half feet by 6 feet. It goes on to say that at the royal city of the Ammonites, his giant bedstead could still be seen as a novelty at the time the texts were written. Fast forward to the present day, and a miraculous discovery has been made. A discovery which could see more biblical stories being proven historically accurate. A recent archaeological dig has unearthed no less than two dozen skeletons, all of giant proportions near the ancient ruins of Rujim el Herai, which is indeed located within the Golan Heights. What's more, compellingly, this was no normal burial. During a press briefing, the team responsible for the discovery expressed their views to the world. Quote, the site of Rujim el Herai has been extensively searched for decades already, but our team noticed a mound nearby, which we thought was of major interest. It has been two long years, but it was definitely worth the effort," said Tom Yagur, one of the archaeologists on site. One of the giants was covered in an exquisitely crafted suit of copper armor. One of their copper swords was also as hard as steel and made in a fashion unknown to modern man. Could this really be the final resting place of the last of the giants? All we can hope is that the Smithsonian doesn't get a chance to buy them.